Тоже приятно. Within the first phase of visa liberalization action plan, mm -hmm. and it, it's unfortunately because of our deputies, they failed to, uh, to to include to the to, to the Rada session uh, the main the main draft laws, and we are really upset because of this fact because we think that Ukrainian society and uh, in particular Ukrainian citizens, we we do deserve to travel without visas, and uh, unfortunately uh, our deputies they have this one, so we we think that it's not unfair. Mm -hmm. It's unfair and uh, we would like to draw your attention and to somehow uh, to take it into consideration that uh, yes. it should be changed actually. Everybody needs to be in the same condition. So thank you very much well, and we hope we that you are going to consider this. Yes, we will. We take, uh, I think, uh, great importance and great interest in, uh, in the visa liberalization action plan. I, I remember I was, I was here in, uh, in Ukraine when it was adopted in November 2010 mm -hmm. uh, and I was very very optimistic and very hopeful that this would be able to uh, sort of be implemented. I'm still, I'm sorry for you. Well, <laughs> I think honest. you have to take one step by, by another. Could you help us with your optimism on <laughs> yeah. Monday in our round table discussion? Because mm -hmm. well, we, we're going to have really expert discussion on visa liberalization, what, need, what mm -hmm. actually needs to be done. At, for now, and uh, we really come for for uh, for help and support of embassies because uh, first of all, it's a reform inside of countries, and we need, yeah. we need your support also abroad in the EU countries. So we count on your support. Well, I, I support you uh, uh, gladly. I'm not sure whether I'm I'm free on Monday, but what we do, we cooperate uh, very much with the Ministry of Interior, for instance, yeah. in specialized areas to make sure that you know technically they are able to. To, to implement, um, uh, so we are we are thinking ahead in, into the second phase, uh, trying to make sure that uh, there is enough trust between the institutions. Um, and, and just now, we have, for instance, uh, high-level delegations uh, in the fields of cyber crime, organized crime. Uh, um, so basically, I think we see good conditions to implement uh, once we have the legal base. But uh, as an embassy, I think you know we have uh, some some reservations and limitations to be of involved. We, we, we don't understand. We are aware of all these limitations. We, we offer our advice. You know, if there is an expert advice. Uh, we very often point out that Moldova, for instance, has managed to go through the first phase uh, speedily. Um, they have uh, issued uh, a very thick uh, strategy paper how this now will be implemented. And I remember from prior years, uh, we had uh, many small countries in the Western Balkans, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yes, for also sure. With, you know, know basically similar mm -hmm. institutional background. Mm -hmm. And also, if I look at the anti-discrimination law with similar approaches, you know, with a uh, Christian but Orthodox uh, tradition. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, it's not so much about you know uh, the concept that some people say the propagation. Of, of homosexuality, I think it's about yeah. some basic rights. We know that this yeah, yeah, we know. scene uh, connected to the very uh, a lot of uh, stereotypes and, and myths. We're trying to break all those stereotypes, but we still can't.